Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Halo RV of Gold. Well, no, not at Halo RV. I am actually on site on the Jayco campus grounds. Today we are going to be taking a walk through the Eagle production facility. Well, one of the Eagle production facilities. Eagle is one of the most popular RVs out there, it has been for a long, long time. And they are actually uh, such a high volume brand. They have to have multiple facilities, multiple production teams dedicated just to producing Eagle trailers and fifth wheels. I'm excited to get to show you this stuff because I can talk about it till I'm blue in the face, but sometimes you just gotta see it for yourself. Now we are actually going to be going through the facility after hours effectively, uh, after all the production has been shut down for the day for a couple reasons. One, it's safer. Two, um, the workforce uh, is primarily Amish and they don't like their face being recorded. So out of respect for the staff here, I tend to come here when there's just basically not as much people and make sure I don't record anybody. I hope you appreciate that. There are things I'd like you to get to see in motion, but I still think overall, you are going to see why I feel Eagle is pound for pound one of the best RVs available today, be it a trailer or a fifth wheel, one of the highest value things I think even exists on the market. Now this is one of a series of factory tours I've been able to record, uh, not just overall, but just here at Jayco. And if you go through and you watch the series, I'll leave you some links in the video description. You'll get to see some similarities between them, but you also get to see where each product is kind of micro tuned to its specific product segment. And that is what I think works so well here. When you have a family of RVs like Jayco, they can really compare notes and share notes and say, here's what works. And then every now and then someone's like, yeah, but here's what works for my stuff a little bit different than yours. Now, this is actually one of the newest physical production facilities at Jayco RV, and it looks at everything in here just as clean, light, bright, and they are producing some of the best RVs that are available out there on the market, in my opinion. If I was gonna be camping in something, I would totally be willing to get into an Eagle. It is a personal favorite of mine. I really love the 321 RSTS, but we are actually gonna start, huh, like, I got, I got some walking to do. A football field down there where the chassis actually roll in and go all the way up. Whew, that's a walk. And this is one of like two or three buildings that does nothing but produce eagles in something this size. That is the volume of brand they have and the number of individual stations they have with each station giving each worker more time to focus on a smaller number of tasks to do them better. There's more labor time spent in this plant than most production facilities. Now it's kind of cool today. We're going to see mostly fifth wheel production, but if you notice the first couple chassis that we're looking at, they're actually transitioning into trailer production. So um, certain plants basically build specific floor plans. They build like, you know, A through D and then E through F, etc. And one of the cool parts about this is that Eagle is one of the very few brands I've seen where their trailers and their fifth wheels are like a part for part match. So you have the same staff with the same training, the same expertise, building everything the same way, whether it is, you know, uh, their like 264 bunkhouse all the way up through like their big front bath and a half 336. But at the end of the day, or well, I guess actually at the beginning of the day, it all starts right here at the chassis level. And this is pretty common in the RV industry. Obviously it all has to start somewhere, you know, but the little detail things here, like on their trailers, Jayco integrates their A-frames. And I talk about this on video, but I don't usually get a chance to show it. You see how the A-frame actually does penetrate through and has more secure points into the chassis frame rails itself. That's one of those little Jayco details that I talk about, but you can't see. And one of the secrets in the sauce to that is because the frame isn't just built on top of the tongue, it means that the whole chassis isn't shoved up in the air so that everything rides a little bit lower. A lot of times, whether it's an Eagle or a J flight, they don't actually have a taller ceiling. They actually have a little floor. And one of the other things that's cool here is count the number of outriggers on these things. That's these uh, little triangular flange wall supports. Look how many are on these chassis. One of the criticisms that Jayco actually gets from chassis engineering teams is that they overbuild that they are using too much steel, they weigh too much, and they cost too much, and that it's a waste of money, that they could increase their profit margins by shrinking down on some stuff. But Jayco insists on custom engineering every single chassis that they make to their own specific specifications. Every single model that we're uh, you see in the Jayco lineup, 
that frame is custom engineered to the load demands of that specific chassis. Another thing I think is interesting is you see on uh, like a rack and pinion floor flush slide, the slides are actually pre-installed from the chassis manufacturer. Their, uh, their, their partner facility produces this stuff that they install. And then it's effectively almost like one solid piece that comes into Jayco. But if you notice, this is a slide room right here. Like this is a bedroom slide. If I'm looking at this, I think this might be a 330 RSTS because this is a bedroom slide. Over there is a big living room slide. And then above the floor over here will be an above floor kitchen slide out. That slide system gets installed when the slide box itself is actually built. We'll see that in a little bit though. Now, as that chassis comes over, the floor is actually constructed as one piece. And this is actually very interesting to me. So that all of the insulation, everything, the um, underbelly wrap, there's actually, you see this uh, layer here. This is called Darko. On the bottom of the floor, there is this little protective layer that is acting, you know, like a cutoff point between the underbelly area where like your holding tanks and things are located. That is helping act as a moisture barrier. It's helping make sure that, um, you know, uh, moist air in that underbelly that hasn't had a chance to breathe out and dissipate yet doesn't permeate up through the floor and like rot the floor from the bottom up. That is uh, a thing that some brands have had trouble with in the past. All of the floor heat ducting is actually installed right through the flooring here. And that is one of the things that actually makes Eagles one of the better cold camp RV options out there. Floor ducted heating is significantly more effective at, a, at actually getting heat into the RV. And when the ducting is run through the floor, it actually passively heats the floor. So what you end up having is more heating more even heating where you don't have hot cold spots and uh you also have a warm floor the floor itself is not cold now from here they flip it <laughs> like like uh hacksaw jim duggan flipping andre the giant i don't know i don't think he ever did that i think that was hulk hogan regardless you get the idea they flip everything upside down so that they can start running wiring to things like uh, the braking, the tank monitors that uh, go to the holding tanks. This is where they actually install the holding tanks. You see the basis of the RV's plumbing start coming into play. And when everything is upside down like this, it makes it a lot easier for the workers to work from the top down. So by flipping the chassis, they're able to uh, improve, yep, improve quality control while also reducing total labor time, which effectively means saving you a lot of money in the process. Now, whether it's a travel trailer or a fifth wheel, again, the processes, the, the things they do here are very consistent all the way through. That's one of the things I like about Eagle is again, trailer, fifth wheel, doesn't matter. Same construction, same build, same quality, same features. What is also cool to see here though, is that before the skin goes on, you get to see the little Jayco differences where they're doing a little bit more. Like adding that double-sided radiant foil all the way under the upper deck, you see it all the way across the bedroom and bathroom deck. It is located in the underbelly. You see that the skins are also being put on over here. This is where you start seeing some of the uh, flexible propane lines being run. You also see where the tires start going on. And this is interesting. These are the little um, protection plates so that God forbid you ever have a blowout. That galvanized steel layering right there is just one more layer to help prevent that belted radio from beating stuff up. Because Jayco is using arguably the very best tires available out there. The Goodyear Endurance Radials rated for up to 87 miles per hour. But debris is debris. You catch something uh, on the road or fail to make sure your tires are properly inflated, which is actually the number one point of tire failure out there in the business, by the way. It can still happen. You could still get a flat with anything. I don't care how good the tire is. Now you might notice two different mismatched rims here. These are the ones that you see shipped on the RV. That is your spare tire. They basically minimize cost by not doing the exact same aluminum wheel on the spare, because most of the time these are what you're going to use. And once that tire is replaced, God forbid there is any sort of blowout, you're probably gonna swap that one back off regardless. And normally I don't get such a good view of this. This is the rear hitch that's on the back of all the Eagle HTs, Eagles, etc. You can see that, uh, that towing hitch back here. Well, it's an accessory hitch on a travel trailer. It's a towing hitch on a fifth wheel. On your fifth wheels, because most states don't allow you to tow doubles of travel trailers. I think only two of them do, by the way. Um, most states allow for doubles towing with fifth wheels. But you can see how it's all actually anchored directly onto the chassis and it's welded, not bolted. So there's not something that is as likely to shear. And you can always tell really the difference between a towing hitch and an accessory hitch because it's got the safety chain hook plate as well as the four-way wiring harness there for a little trailer or cargo pod or whatever behind you. 
Now from there, they flip it back over and this is where you see the, the floor actually kind of start to get skinned and looking a little bit more like what you expect here. And it actually all comes right off this roller. They roll one long seamless sheet out, cut it off at the end here, secure it in place, and uh, everything else goes on top of it. So they're not cutting the flooring around something. You don't have to worry about cold in uh, the northern states or maybe even one of the southern states after those nasty polar vortexes take everybody by surprise, causing it to peel and curl and shrink. It's not going to like, you know, around the island, you're not gonna have like an ugly flooring point. Everything is put down here first. That's not how RVs always used to be done. This is also another area where you get to see the uh, plywood in play right here. You can see that 5 8 tongue and groove plywood. You can actually see the edge of that groove right there. These are four by eight tongue and groove sheets so that they all seam together. They're not using OSB floor decking. And when everything seams together, the edges have a really hard time kind of squeaking and creaking against one another. It gives you a stronger floor that is quieter when you walk on it. You don't tend to get those flex points. Gonna get you to the upper deck where they actually have the cabinet shop. And uh, I'm getting my steps in today, man. Woo because above everything, there's basically a factory over a factory, like a loft, it's called mezzanine construction. And this up here is their cabinet shop. And once again, I'm really struck by just the cleanliness and the organization of everything in here. Um, obviously there's a few more moving parts during active production, but you can see how everything is staged. You can see the organization. And I like how, how much space is up here. A lot of factories seem really, really cramped like they're They've outgrown their production facility, and I don't feel that on the Eagle facility. This was purpose-built for Eagle, just for Eagle, nobody else, and it really, really shows here. Um, if you notice, like these are the uh, cabinetry tables over here. They've got jigs for everything that they pull out. They pre-make a bunch of cabinet styles and rails, and what they're actually doing is they're batch building the uh, cabinetry for each model. An interesting thing in the RV business, at least from most brands that do high volume anyway, is they don't build each RV like as it's requested. They build each floor plan based on popularity um, and they try to build as many of them in a row as they reasonably can because you get quality through repetition effectively, not to mention it's just, it, it's simpler and easier for a hundred different reasons. But this is what's interesting. The Like, let's say it looks like maybe they're building a 321 RSTS down there. I believe that's actually exactly what they're doing. No, that's a mid bunk, regardless. The, uh, the cabinetry, the internal wall structures, because over there, those are internal walls that are being built, like the partition wall between, say, a bedroom and bathroom, for instance, the, 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 the walls that define the interior rooms. They are all pre-staged up here, and this that we're looking at is one RV. That that is loaded down there is one RV. And it's interesting because the floors are built and then they're effectively almost built from the inside out. It's the opposite of what you would think from looking at a home. Now, up top here, you see that red spool. There's some poor soul who has to have legs for days, who, who could push the Chicago Bears center out of the way and, and tackle a quarterback. They, they take this stuff down, they place it. They don't just slide it down and let it slam into each other, basically. Um, that's a question I get all the time. No, they actually walk the stuff down into place. And then from there, the workers on the lower deck grab the stuff off, place it, uh, e either mount it like you're seeing these bathroom walls in that island, or as in the case of some of that uh, cabinet facing down there, they just have it in the middle of the floor until the walls go up a couple stations later where some things are actually secured to the walls. So again, it's it's inside out. It's almost the opposite. But later, they're actually going to start doing stuff from the outside in again. Wow, man. Sorry. I'm like a kid in a candy store. I get to see these things all the time, but when I get to see them from the inside out like this, it just, it gives me a new pride in the stuff that I see every day because especially in this factory, I see the care and concern and uh, that, that the individual people here have. Um, it's not just a job. Like they don't have to build Jayco's. You can, you, you can feel it when you're up here, they get to, you know? So there's that look right there. <laughs> look at that sign. It says, we build beautiful eagles. <laughs> what was I just saying? There you go, case in point. So when you're looking over here, you see uh, all of a sudden there's a stack of walls over there. Those walls all come in from the Jayco lamination plant. All lamination at Jayco is done at one consolidated location. 
So this RV over here is actually going to slide sideways on those little runner tracks that you're seeing. It'll come into this middle area. They grab one of the walls off each side of that. They put them in place, secure them. And then very quickly, we go from just this weird abstract, you know, wide open room of a box to suddenly things start taking shape very quickly. And one of the things I really like about Eagle, I think is a very different part of Eagle construction that not everybody always gets to see is the way that their roofs are done. So there's a lot of nice roofing out there. There's a lot of walkable roofing manufacturers out there. Nobody in this class has the load rating that Jayco has. Part of that is due to their Magnum Truss roof construction. I mean, look at how many doubled up trusses are in here. They have double the roof structure of almost any brand I think I've ever seen, sometimes even other brands internally within Jayco. Eagles are never the lightest weight. They're never the least expensive. They are always among the most hardy of constructed RVs out there. Now, uh, Eagle has th I, I, something I was excited to see. A full Eagle, not the HT models, have standardized dual whisper ducted air, just like North Point and Pinnacle have done that. And uh, here's a good look at their helix ducting system. So everything, this is what I call these like cereal box ducts right here. These are insulated lined boxes right here. And it doesn't just blow hot air into the end of it. It is all capped off. But what's interesting, Jayco's engineering has done a lot of testing on airflow to make sure they're getting the most air out of the ducting into the RV possible instead of leaving it up here where it does no good. And the last duct on this will actually be located typically like right here. They actually run a little dead end termination point because there's turbulence at the termination point that causes a little bit of back pressure that causes everything to spill down into the ducts. That way, the front of the RV and the back of the RV always get the same even airflow to keep you cool, whether you're in the very back, the very front, or in between. Oh, I want to walk out there on that scaffolding, but they're being cool by letting me here. I don't want to cause an OSHA disaster. <laughs> So you notice after that roof gets one piece hoisted in place, which is the same thing the big luxury North Point and Pinnacles do, which by the way, the similarities in construction that you'll see, if you watch both videos, you're gonna see a lot of similarities. That's why Eagles have the exact same two plus three year full-time RV warranty that you find up in a North Point and Pinnacle. So this is the last of the uh, roof construction uh, stations, by the way, before they get to the roof skinning. And after they've run all the wiring to get to all the lights, the speakers, all, all those kind of things, this is where they roll the insulation across. But notice it's actually, they get it on the roll this way. It's a double layer of batten insulation plus a layer of radiant insulation. It starts all the way at the rear wall, wraps all the way, not just to the front and stops, but all the way down the nose. And then you already saw how that um, upper deck has, uh, like the bed and bath deck has its own radiant barrier plus all the radiant work that they're doing in the underbelly. Now, this is another really key Jayco thing. They use plywood roof decking right here. <laughs> Somebody left the radio on. I don't know who's talking about what, but I can't understand it. <laughs> you ever notice that? Like when you go to Walmart, Target, and all you hear is like, and I, I guess somebody can understand that. I sure can't. Regardless, sorry, saw something shiny. The plywood roof decking that Jayco uses, I talk about it. You never get to see it. And this is all, so it is initially just stapled in place to hold its shape to make sure everything lines up. Then they make a second pass through and screw everything down. So it is stapled and screwed. It is double faster to keep everything in place, not just while it's brand new, not just while it's under warranty, but for the long term, the long haul, the, 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 you know, the full ownership period here. Additionally, where these sheets meet, where they screw everything down, they come through with a little grinder just to make sure there's no sharp edges rubbing onto your roof membrane causing issues or uh, uh, a sharp screw head scratching it from the underside so that, you know, you don't have a failed roof from the factory level because obviously <laughs> you don't want to make that call. We don't want to have that call. Nobody wants that. So they make sure you don't. Another football field later. I I'm telling you, man, it I forget so many times like i know how you don't realize how big this industry is until you actually come down here and see it in person and see it for yourself and this is just one production plant from just eagle who has two or three out of all of jayco out of all of it i mean it's nuts you think of the total physical infrastructure of this industry it's crazy but while all that work is going on upstairs it doesn't stop down here. You actually see things like more of the interior cabinet structures, the stuff that was loose previously until the walls came up. 
you start seeing things like that go into place. You start seeing things like a little sofa side stand going in place. And over here, we're starting to see the beginnings of some of the slide out operations where some of the seals on the slides. Oh, actually, we got a before and after here on the right side. You can see before they put the wiper seals on and then uh, after the wiper seals come on. Uh, just kind of a, a cool, there you go, before and after thing. And like I said, Eagle is a brand that has more stations in this massive facility than most. So each station has one or two little tasks that each worker does all day, every day. That's one of the interesting things I've actually noticed in the RV business is someone will come in and say, yeah, I work on line 21. We build Eagles. I'd like to see one. And I'm like, what? You see them every day. He's like, no, I install the ceiling fan and I install that light fixture. That's what I do. And like, you don't do anything else. And they're like, no. So it's kind of interesting how sometimes the workers uh, really don't even have full visibility of the final product that they're producing. There's always a couple workers who are doing some pre-staging and some organization. A couple of them have seen me walking around and they're like, and I'm just like, hey, Josh Aravener. Like that's supposed to explain anything. They're like, now this is one of those stations I wish you got to see in person. I do have to describe it. You got to hang with me a little bit. So story time. You see that roller right there? Jayco is a brand that fully glues their entire roof structure, well, the, the skin, the membrane down. Now you see how this wood looks a little bit funny. That's because remember how I said they come through with like a grinder, uh, a sander type thing to make sure that there's no sharp objects or screw heads or anything like that sticking up. That's the end result after they've done that. That's what it's going to kind of look like where they've scuffed the surface of the plywood in a couple spots. No big deal. But they pour glue down the middle and then somebody comes through with that roller brush right there and they roll the adhesive all the way to the edges. They don't spray it so they don't have overspray and glue on the sidewall. That is a more time consuming, more costly process, but it is something that gives us better, smoother uh, roofing here that uh, you know is what you're going to want long-term. Now, God forbid something ever happens. Let's say you accidentally uh, catch a tree branch or something like that and rip one of these air conditioners off. There's not a loose bed sheet on top of your RV that's going to catch air and rip off like a sailboat getting shredded going down the road. You ever see one of those pictures on Facebook? That's a manufacturer who doesn't glue their roofing down. That is one of those unseen, unspoken about Jayco differences. Now, what we're looking at here, as long as we're up here, we're looking at twin Coleman quiet air conditioners. And on a full Eagle, they are standard dual 15,000 BTU Coleman quiet air conditioners, along with um, dual whisper ducting on the inside. You see how uh, on the left there, you can see how this one was built with the Overlander 190 watt solar package plus inverter, whereas some of these are not. That's a really cool option that Jayco offers on any and all of their Eagles. And frankly, I think even like uh, the Feathers and the Whitehawks down the laminated section, pretty much every Jayco travel trailer and fifth wheel has some level of factory solar option available now. Even little details like this, like when they're putting the ladders on, you see all these little rubber stopper jobs that we're looking at right here? That's a technical term, by the way. As I back up, you see they actually come in on this roll. That's an extra thing Jayco does that Jayco puts on their ladders where these ladder uh, rungs called stanchions, the support legs, actually attach to the RV. That way you're not getting direct metal on fiberglass contact, which is a good way to, it, it's too much force in one spot. That little rubber stopper helps act like a seal for the screws. It helps uh, soften the blow of the high pressure air guns that they use here to make sure that you're not going to get spider cracks in your, uh, you know, the, the fiberglass of your RV. Because if you're noticing, they do use a laminated rear wall on Eagles. You can actually see the bead foam within that wall right there. They don't want this thing four, five, seven, eight, 12 years down the line looking like crap. They want it to always look good. That's a Jayco thing. They are built for the long haul. Now this big open bay right here, this is where some of the slide outs are installed. I can see where a few have already been installed on the previous station, but I like to get to show you this because you get to see this slide out is like a camper inside of a camper. It has virtually the exact same roof construction, floor construction. This looks to be, okay, so this is something like a 317 RL. Okay, we have a refrigerator on the right, stove uh, to the left of that, some drawers with microwave above and room for a sofa over a big window over here. I don't know why I care. I, I think it's fun to look at slide outs like this and try to figure out which floor plan it comes from. It's never gonna be on Jeopardy, it's worthless information, but it's fun for me. But once again, you can see how it's easier to build these things almost from the inside out, outside in, whatever you wanna call it, uh, where you get to be able to access all the wiring more easily. And it's kind of funny because like, you see like 40 workstations 
where it's like an open chassis and just a floor. Then all of a sudden the walls go up and then all of a sudden the roof happens. And then all of a sudden at once you look at it, you're like, oh, it's starting to look like an eagle. From here on the outside, you tend to see a few things like a couple marker lights get happening. Um, they finish off things like uh, the, oh, what do I wanna say, docking station. They install the water heater, a couple more things on the outside. But from here, now that the walls and the floor of the roof are done, you're looking at a lot of wiring of fixtures inside and placing of furniture. Another thing that you're seeing on the production line as things are going is active quality control. That funny little tape that you're looking at right there, I don't know what it's telling us. They, they detected some kind of defect right there that on the production line, they're actively quality controlling and going to get ironed out before it gets to the shipper, before it gets to the dealership. Similarly, it looks like something happened down here on a uh, piece of skirting. This was removed, it was replaced. They don't wait for it to get to a dealership before this is being addressed. They're doing a lot of stuff on the fly to make sure that they're putting out the best product they can every time. Man, and I don't know, they must be picky. I don't see what happened here. Obviously they did, I'm glad they did. Ah, there it is, there's a little crimp right there. Good eye, man. Man, that is, that was small, that is minor. That is on the underside of the skirt or I don't know, I would even see it. And I crawl over every single one of these things when they land at Halitz. <laughs> that is awesome. That is, that is confidence inspiring right there. They're looking even where I wouldn't look. And something I've noticed here on Jayco's production facilities where they install these stable steps, they don't do it at the end of the production line. I have seen some factories who they, they wait until all the production is done, then they slap these things on at the last station, but they never actually put them down to make sure the door can open and close. By having these stable steps on mid-production line, they're always making sure that stuff opens and closes the way it's supposed to, so you don't have a door that's grinding against the steps. Now, like I said, this is very much a work in progress. There's a bunch of little extra pieces of wires getting clipped off in here. You see slide fascia going up once the slide walls are installed. You see some of those extra cabinets now that the walls and roof are in place that can be secured. Back here, you see a hide-a-bed going in play, and you see all the, the, the framing for the windows. That's what all these little hoops that we're looking at are here. By the way, you might notice how not all of the furniture is in place yet. That's one of the nice things about uh, an Eagle here. They have wider doors so that if you need to or want to exchange furniture later on, you can always get this stuff through the door. Sometimes on some things like theater seats, the backs come off so you don't have to try to get that funky L-shaped thing where you're like, okay, wrap it, now pull it around the corner, go your way, and you end up grinding your knuckles into the door jam. Makes it a lot easier, less knuckle grinding. And in case you're curious, that J Command BM Probe system where you can control your whole RV basically with Bluetooth, there's where it all feeds into. That, uh, I I'm glad I'm not the one doing that. I, I don't have ADHD or anything, but I know I don't have the attention span for something like that. But look at it again. It's amazing how quickly, once everything is wired up, how quickly it gets finished off and how neat and clean the look is as a result. Now, apologies, it's a little dark in here. Again, they didn't turn on the lights just for me today. I'm kind of on Jayco time right now. But I wanted to show you how just two or three steps down the line, like the last one we looked at, I get it. It looked a little spooky, like stuff is missing. There's wires hanging out. Well, yeah, they, you know, they're coming together. But notice how only a few stations later, we start to see everything really taking shape. There's still a few things that need to be done. Like I see the, the blades need to go on the fan over here. You know, that's not something that they just slap up. They actually assemble that here. But notice how the furniture fit through the door, gets installed, gets mounted in place. You see how you don't see exposed wiring gaping everywhere. We're seeing some cabinetry, some doors go into place. Something else I've noticed, how clean it is in here. After, uh, you know, the raw construction stations are done, they basically have almost like an entire clean up, sweep up, uh, get it out of here station, just so that as they're doing final stuff, you don't get me wrong, you're always going to see a little bit of construction particulate around but they do a lot to minimize that now let me see if i can try to get you some more light in here that's a little bit better so this is an uh an option that's uh newer to the eagles like eagles have these two plus two chair arrangement things where normally there's the two fixed full-time chairs over there and then there's a pair of fold-away chairs this still includes that but when you're looking at the eagle build sheet and you see uh you know freestanding table plus bench there's a free floating kind of booth bench seat over here that sort of buckle straps into place for transit. You can use it like seating. It can be storage. You can, it's portable. You can move it over like an ottoman, like a footrest. 
Or you can take out the extra two chairs and try to squeeze as many people around this table as possible. Now, I haven't really been putting that on a lot of eagles so far, but what do you think about that? Would you like this in a couple's camper, in a bunkhouse? If you were buying it, what would you think? And from there, it's basically just a few final touches. Like I said, little things like the fan blades and a couple baggage doors or whatnot till we get to the final product. But isn't it crazy how we've walked two football fields together today and how it all began with just that little chassis. And again, other than the obvious chassis differences, whether it's an Eagle HT trailer, Eagle HT fifth wheel, or all the way up to what I call the big birds, the full eagles, it's all the same. They're a part for part for part systems match. That's one of the things I really like about them. And it's funny because I'll see so many people sometimes look at like an Eagle HT, like we uh, that, that 31 MB Eagle HT mid bunk room. A lot of people look at that and have asked things like, where's the jug for the, the drinking water system? Why doesn't it have that extra little faucet? Because it's an HT, because they look so similar that you really got to know the difference between them because they do just that good of a job of consistency. So I hope you really learned something today. I hope this is beneficial for you. If you've liked what you've seen, do me a favor, hit the like button on the video. That makes sense, like for a like. Ah. But <laughs> um, if you appreciate the behind the scenes information like this, taking the time to get away from the dealership, kind of neglect things there a little bit just to get down here and get this for you, please hit that subscribe button. Remember, we're not the dealership, or we're not, <laughs> no, we are at the dealership. We're not the manufacturer. We're Halet RV. We're family owned and operated. My dad's a founder, my brother's a VP. I do the computer stuff. You appreciate working with a family owned and operated facility. When you're ready, we're ready. Until then, I'm gonna keep trying to pump this stuff out. Let me know what else you'd like to know. Any questions you have, let me know what you liked that you got to learn today. And as always, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.